24. Talking about the body. Mm -hmm. We got the mind. We got the spirit renewed. We got the spirit born again. Mm -hmm. Now we got our mind, mm -hmm. our soldiers around, renewed. And this is a process too. Because like I say, it, it's all of us, a whole lot of people that got saved, they got saved as adults. So they still got to work through some things because they, uh, you know, everybody said they grown. But, but and they grown adults, but they still got to grow up. So that's why you got to get up under a teacher, somebody who can help you grow spiritually so that your mind can be renewed. Because listening to your friends or listening to a family member could cause you to go astray. And you find out, even though you are beautifully saved, you find yourself and slip back out there. But if you get under a pastor or teacher who can help you in the word, then you grow up in the faith and you grow up in love. Amen. The body is the tabernacle. See, we got three parts. We got a spirit, soul, and body. Amen. And all of it belongs to God. Amen. Okay, so the body is the tabernacle for the Holy Spirit. It is the temple of God. It's where the Holy Spirit desires to dwell. Since our bodies are the temple of God, we should keep them holy. H-O-L-Y. We are not our own. We have been purchased with the blood of Jesus. So we are not to defile God's temple. 1 Corinthians 6.15 said, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. Then I skip down to verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. So your body, as pretty as it is, it belongs to God. And he wants that body to be just as holy as your spirit and your mind is. Okay? Your body belongs to him. It's a temple. You can't see the Holy Spirit, but he's in there. But the scriptures say he's not going to hang around in an unclean temple. And we know in 1 Corinthians uh, what chapter it talks about fornication and defiling the temple and things that go in there. That shouldn't be among us. Paul said that shouldn't be among you as Christians. So we, that's why he said come out from those things. First Corinthians 5, 20 says, For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Glorify God in those bodies that he's given you. Let your bodies represent him. Know how to dress as, as women. Know how to dress as men. Know how to carry yourself. This is sin. My body. I want my body to look, you know, I don't know you can the body can look holy. Because <laughs> you, can, you know, back in the day, people used to put these clothes on you to kind of make it look holy. But that don't mean your body was holy. You know, long dress because you wear a long dress. When I first got saved, all I had was hot pants and boots. <laughs> right. And I came to church one day, and they said, come as you are. <laughs> so I was so hungry for Jesus. I was in love with Jesus. And I wasn't going back out there. But then people started, the older saints, they bless the heart, Lord. They started putting all kind of clothes on me. <laughs> and my husband said, what in the world? <laughs> about 22, 23 going mm -hmm. So I ain't had no been looking like that. <laughs> but I won because I won out of respect and love for the people that were giving them to me. But as soon as I got some extra money, I went and got me some clothes. Like, we call them church clothes, but uh, <laughs> I got me some church clothes that look like that. I won't about to lose my husband over oh, yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. Okay. All right. So he said in Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, right, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, separate unto God, which is your reasonable servant. So when he said present your bodies, he means to present, carry yourself in a way that it, that it pertains to a holiness. Let, let people see the God in you. You know, well, it's, it's from the inside out. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. If we try to fix the outside before we fix the inside. Mm-hmm. That's right. But let's fix the inside first. Right. And then, you know what? You really don't have to tell the person what That's to do right. or how to dress. Right. But you know what? Because the Holy Spirit in them will convict yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. He will convict them. Let him let pass my earn. Pastor Ernest, mind you, said, you trying to clean the fish. How he put it low into you try to clean it before you even catch him. Uh, you know, <laughs> leave some stuff to the Holy Ghost. Right. You know, right. oh, our job is to witness to them, yes. to bring them to Christ with yes. the gospel. And once they come to Christ and get in the word, they're gonna find out yes. what right. how to dress, what oh, to yes. do, what to yes. say. Right. Those yes. things. Right. Okay. Right. I'm almost done. All right, I got a little bit more. All right, Mass, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that part. Go All right, all right, here we go. Then they had a word in there in the scripture called blameless. In that verse 23 that Jeanette read, God wants to present us blameless. And blameless means to be innocent of wrongdoing and without guilt. When we follow and obey God, we become blameless. Philippians 2, 14 and 15 said, Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as light in the world. If we are lights and we're supposed to be shining, then we should not be having uh, all these things, you know, accusation things coming against us. Right. They shouldn't see us in the mall acting like a fool or carrying <laughs> on and, you know, acting crazy. Right. You know, we shouldn't be going in there and saying, you don't know who I am. No. I'll go, you know, just because the, the waitress didn't bring your food the way you want it, you're going to show up on turn this table upside down. No, that's unbecoming to a Christian. That's not right. But it's a way to handle any disservice. I know some of us have done it before. I call you no names. I ain't even looking. But we want to be blamed. Okay? You don't want to have them say, you were a Christian. Uh, Look at you. Uh, they ain't nothing about them. They ain't nothing to them. You know, we don't want that because what they're doing, they've been putting blame on our Lord and saving Jesus right, Christ. Right. But we don't want to bring a reproach against our Lord. Amen. And Colossians 1, 21 and 22 says, and you were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Mm. The Christians do wicked works? Yeah. Oh yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. But you got to get, what, renewed in the mind yes, so all right. this stuff will eventually go away. Right. Yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy. God has already reconciled us through his body. Mm-hmm. He died once and for all for mm-hmm. all our sins. Yes. So all we have to do, as Pastor told us this morning, when you sin, go to God immediately. Tell That's God right. you're sorry. That's Repent right. of that thing. You know, tell God you don't want to fall into that trap again. Ask for his help. Amen. You know, because when you have it, try to, you think you can get back, but you don't really get back That's because right. God sees and knows all That's things. Right. Okay? And not only God, but there's a whole lot of people see and know too. <laughs> so you just, you know, just right. let, confess the sin. Just That's confess right. it. I had to do that this morning before I came to church. Oh. <laughs> you know, but I didn't see, I didn't do those things. Yeah. It's something, you know what, I said something I shouldn't have said. Mm-hmm. And I should have just kept it to myself. Mm-hmm. And I said, Lord, from now on, from this day forth, when I feel a certain way about something, mm-hmm. I'm going to take it to you and I ain't taking it to nobody else. Mm-hmm. Because when you start talking about one, I found out they turned up, they talking about you too. Mm-hmm. So I just shut your mouth, That's right. shut your mouth. All right. I'm growing, y'all. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. The last part of this first lesson on Inspired 23, I looked at the word preserve, because that was in the scripture too. Uh-huh. God preserve you means to be kept. Uh-huh. And we know how to preserve. We preserve peaches and pears, and uh-huh. some people do. Uh-huh. Used to be back in the day with plums. We don't have no plums in the world in Virginia. They cut down all the plum trees. You know, I, they, I mean, my parents used to have plums. Ooh, we ate them things. But um, you can't find nothing like that now. Not even a pecan tree. 
But um, but God said he wants to keep us. He preserves us. Yes, and he, he keeps us. Yes, and the one scripture said, he will keep those that desire to be kept. Yes, so if you desire to be kept, he preserves us. Yes. That's how he does it through the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. We don't have to keep trying to keep ourselves, but the Holy Spirit preserves us and keeps us. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up. Four. Psalms 15, <laughs> 1 through 3. Lord, this is Thomas said, Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, watch that tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. This is how we know we have, we are grounded, we are evolved, mm -hmm. and we are walking in integrity. Yeah. Right. Three yeah. things to remember. The spirit is born again mm -hmm. when I accept Christ. Mm -hmm. My soul, which is my mind, my intellect, is renewed through the word of God. My body is crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. I have died to my selfish will and ways. We are grounded to evolve with integrity. Amen. Amen. Amen.